Okay, hello everybody. Happy New Year and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studio for the next episode of Security Matters. Uh, we're getting the year kicked off right. We've got Matt Barnett, the incoming CEO of PSA Security Network. And I, I tell you what, we've had one CEO for I think about 20 years, Matt. So i uh, glad to get you on here. Uh, we won't grill you about all the PSA plans because I know you haven't had a lot of time to make any yet. But um, And I, I'd also know you're well known in the industry, but let's I always like to start off with my guests kind of introduce themselves. So maybe let's go back to the how you got engaged sort of with the industry and um, give us a little give us your audience a little flavor of, uh, of, you know, how you how you worked your way up to uh, take over for Bill ultimately. Yeah, great to be here, Andrew, and thanks uh, thanks for inviting me. So it's an interesting full circle. I've been this will be my 30th year in the security industry. I started. Wow with a uh, security integrator that was based in Northern California and Silicon Valley. And uh, they happened to be a PSA um, member. I didn't know what that meant at the time. I was a IT guy uh, that was hired right out of college. And um, my first, and my very first business trip in the, in the real world, so to speak, uh, was to the PSA, uh, PSA Tech in Denver back in 1992. And that was my uh, my introduction to PSA. So it goes back uh, quite a while, and it's uh, gone full circle. So I spent you know, a large portion of my career, as you know, working on the manufacturer side of the business uh, with companies primarily in, in access control, but some video, and uh, most recently with HID. So uh, I hopefully have uh, learned a lot over the years, although uh, always more to learn. And at my second week on the job here at PSA, it's been uh, quite thrilling uh, with the great people here and speaking with uh, members such as yourself and learning more about the uh, inner workings. Well, I, I'll confess, like we we were like, who's going to replace Bill? He's been there so long, right? And like, and his story, you know, tied to PSA had some struggles, you know, back in the days that they all worked through. So a lot of attachment. So we're, I'm so glad we've got a like I consider he's like this industry insider guy right I didn't I didn't know you had actually 30 years in the industry so um we're pleased that you're there that's awesome um working for the integrators will be a little different but I mean you've been around our community you know it seems like hand in hand with us along the way even as a manufacturer um what 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 do you think the industry is going to look like because it I know we're into 2021 and everybody's ready for the new year, but I got to confess, it feels like last year to me so far. So I know for you, it's quite different. You've moved to Denver and, you know, you got some things going. What's, um, what do you think the industry's got to kind of look forward to here in 2021? Yeah, so if we had a crystal ball, we could, uh, we could all make a lot of money, right? But um, <laughs> certainly, you know, we have to be a bit op optimistic that, uh, you know, we're going to come out of this pandemic. I think there's some going to be some pent up demand uh, although it, you know this, it's going to shift, and, and one thing you learn on the manufacturer side of this business, you know, you could develop great products, but if if you don't have it, the channel to actually implement those products, you know, mm -hmm. you go nowhere in this industry, uh, especially. So I, I don't think it's that much different than other product industries, but you know, the integration channel is really key to success, and uh, you know, a lot of manufacturers uh, learn that lesson maybe the hard way. Uh, but, you know, it's it is very difficult to set up a channel and having, you know, companies that represent your products well out there. Uh, so I, I've been asked that question quite a bit about, you know, working with the integrators. But really, in my my career on the manufacturing side, we are always working with integrators because, you know, they're the ones who, who make it work at the end of the day. Uh, so, you know, I'm excited to be, you know, in this in this capacity. Uh, knowing how vital the integration channel is to the vitality of the industry in a whole, uh, you know, really helping the the members of PSA, uh, you know, increase their you know their their capabilities, uh, working with the product manufacturers to bring those great products to market. And I do think the pandemic has has accelerated a shift uh, in in products. You know, I think cloud uh, from access control and video has certainly um, become much more popular now than it was a year ago, pre-pandemic. Uh, we've only seen that accelerate. And I think uh, that's you know, certainly going to be part of the future. And, and uh, the integration channel, as, you, as you're well aware, cybersecurity is still a big, uh, a big issue that needs to be addressed. And um, you know, hosted and managed services is still a big area that I think is still in the infancy in, in the electronic security market, though it's been you know, 
de facto and, and things like alarm and burglar uh, burglar portion of the industry uh, for access control and video. That's still early days, but I, I believe that's the future. So helping you know bring those products and solutions and services uh, to the channel is, I think, a big part of 2021 and beyond. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. You know, I, I've watched some of our integrators sort of adopt, you know, these new strategies, right? A lot, a lot um, are mired in the analog days, you might say, right? And I've, I've talked, I've, or I've, I've definitely been recorded talking about the, the, I think I've actually been guilty of reverse ageism, where I'm saying like, there's a lot of old guys, bald headed guys like me in the industry that haven't made this digital transition very well. And now we're moving into a cloud and a managed services transition, you know, kind of on the, the tails of the IT industry, right? So, you know, that um, there's some challenges there for the groups that don't adopt, you know, I mean, um, what, what do, you, do you think that uh, should be a, a bit of a warning sign? Do, they, do we need a change of management? Do we need more education for those that are sort of stuck in the mud or whatever it may be? How can yeah, we help? I, I think it's an education, <laughs> right? I mean, it's it, the reality is it's an education. And I think, you know, you're going to see a separation of companies that uh, you know, the ones that are going to get on board here and really implement, it, it's not just about a product, as you're well aware, you, you have to change your in philosophies, everything from, you know, the comp plans for your sales team uh, to your accounting on how, you know, subscriptions is just, it's a different accounting system, basically. So, uh, you know, I think the, the owners of companies that get on board with that are going to be more successful five years from now. And, and ones that aren't, you know, maybe relegated to very small niche type of markets or become uh, wire pullers, right? So, you know, that to me is not a great place for you, for companies to be. Uh, I'd rather see them really build a book of business that are based on uh, subscription services. Uh, and, and I think that just pays dividends, especially when you have downturns like we've seen, you know, in certain verticals in the electronic security market, right? Yeah, like um, I know, I think I think security by and large, it seems that, that folks I've talked with did did pretty well, right? We have some projects that maybe got put on hold, uh, but by and large, you know, as you mentioned earlier, there's a there's just pent up demand. So for us, it's kind of like a shifting at revenues there. It'll just come a little bit later if some projects got stalled. But the AV guys, you know, that community that service, you know, hospitality and all the business office work because there's no one in the offices. I've heard that they really struggle. Do you have um? Our visibility on the how they've done. I know we own USAV, and I don't have a lot of partners over there yet. But uh, could you comment on the you know sort of the, is there a compare and contrasting, or are they um, a mixed bunch like the security group? You know, I've had, I've just started my journey in learning much more about the pro AV side, and, and you're right, yeah. it's, a, it's a piece of the uh, PSA business. Uh, that I plan to spend a lot more time in, uh, in getting involved in. Uh, the early indications, you, you know, they weathered the storm, although, you know, as you said, people aren't going to offices, so they don't have tremendous need for uh, the AV equipment that they were using prior. Uh, but we've seen a bit of a shift in some of the technologies that, that are being implemented. So, uh, you know, the, the integrators I've talked to on the pro AV side, um, you know, certain verticals like healthcare, there has been an uptick in AV in those markets, whereas uh, there was initial bounce in uh, college and uh, higher ed, as well as K through 12. And then things slowed down significantly when people weren't going back to school. So uh, I think, you know, that that market will rebound. I, I, you know, I think education is certainly a, uh, where they're going to be back in classrooms, uh, both K through 12 and higher ed. Uh, you know, the question is going to be about corporations and we're going to be going back in the same capacity. And my belief is, you know, it, it's it's never going to be back to the pre-pandemic levels. I think it's going to change. There'll be more, uh, you know, shift schedules and, and people coming certain days of the week. Uh, but there, there will be offices. I don't know that you get away from having corporate offices and, and those offices are going to need AV. So I think it's going to be a a partial shift in technology and a partial shift to what markets um, are going to be where the money is, right? So I think the successful AV contractors will move into those markets and, and bring products. I mean, they're in the same situation with hosted and managed services in those markets as well. And so there'll be, I think, a big uptick in, in those, um, those service lines going forward. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm looking forward. We have the um, NSCA has its BLC conference coming up pretty soon. So that's always a, a good, right. you know, they're pretty honest about what's going on in the industry. You know, we can always count on getting a, 
a, a good pulse on, on how they're doing because they're they definitely run in different sort of markets than than I do anyway traditionally. Um, is the is uh, so is PSA remote? Are you guys all still remote? Are you back in the office? How how are things going up there? Small small contingent of people that uh, coming into the office um, daily, and then you know a few people popping in from time to time. So. Uh, like most companies, you know, we want to keep everybody safe. And so, uh, you know, everybody's set up to work remote and that seems to be working out really well. You know, the, the question that we're all grappling, grappling with is, you know, what is the future going to look like? And we certainly don't need the office space we have today if this is going to continue on uh, <laughs> indefinitely, right? And so, you know, what what is the space requirement going to be in 2022? And, um, you know, having that set up appropriately for where we believe, um, you know, the employees will you know be coming in uh, again i think it's going to be more split shifts and certain people will, will never come back to an office i believe so I, I just think we're going to be dealing with this new dynamic for you know for the long term yeah I've, I've heard a lot of people initially express like wow i'm actually really productive at home and then it went to wow i'm actually overworking at home i'm like can't get away from the work and now they're like i miss all my people i want to get back in the office so it's, there's been this interesting conversation that's changed over the year for sure just just, you know, what are we, 10, 11 months in here now. Um, tell you what, we're getting to about midway. So let's, we'll jump off and we'll pay some bills and we'll be back in about one minute with Matt Barnett. Stick around. Awesome. Welcome back to Security Matters. We're talking with Matt Barnett and we're just kind of going through, you know, how the, there's been a cultural shift uh, in the industry where everybody was freaked out to have to stay home. Then they figured out how to work remote. Then they overworked. And then now they all want to they miss each other getting back into the office. And I know I miss the PSA tech community. I mean, that you know, we're so used to seeing everybody at all the conferences. Um, what do we what do we got on the radar? Uh, you think we're going to be able to have tech this year? You think we're going to be virtual? I don't even know. I haven't even heard the plans for that yet. Yeah, that's uh, again the million dollar question. Okay. Uh, we're we're planning. Um, you know, we're we're basically going down three paths, and we have to in the next probably wow. thirty days, you know, make a call. It's going to be either in person, uh, fully virtual, or a hybrid. Uh, I personally am hoping right now that, you know, the hybrid approach, I think, is going to be um, most likely if, as things hopefully improve and we can convince people like yourself to make the trip here to Denver, uh, that we'll have a contingent of, um, you know, the management and owners of companies come in. Uh, and I think that's, you know, in speaking with some of the sponsors, that's really what they're looking for. You know, people are just itching to get out. And so <laughs> if, as long as they feel safe, um, you know, they, they want to get in front of people. And that's, the, you know, the big struggle. You know, a lot of our, our, our partners, vendor partners, you know, have sales forces that have been unable to travel for nine, 10 months now. And so, you know, they're itching to, you know, get out and meet with people and, and talk about what they're doing. I think we're all kind of burned out with webinars at this point. So, uh, you know, get, getting in front of people and, and talking about what their problems are and offering, you know, solutions. Uh, we're hoping that PSA Tech is going to be one of the first industry events in 2021. Uh, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, and I I, um, I think there's a challenge there that the AV community could help us with. I'm, these hybrid idea, I think even when we're fully healthy, people are going to expect a hybrid audience, like live people and people that are joining remotely. And maybe the guests, you know, that we're always up there as panelists, 
maybe you know three people are live and two people are beamed in remotely, right? That are part of the discussion. It keeps it sort of global, and and I don't think this hybrid is going. The idea is going to leave. You know, I, I think there's just a lot to be gained uh, from from being able to do things um, with a uh, sort of a digital component. You know, like like a like a, a webinar or, or someone that's you know a big a big head like this. You know, sitting there on the screen. <laughs> You think, um, is there, uh, how are you approaching the potential hybrid? Is that, um, that, is that what it looks like, like broadcasted as well as beamed in as, as well as live people? Yeah, I think it's all of the above. So wow. I, it was funny, I was talking to a nephew of mine who's in, in a university and he was going to the classroom last semester and there was only, you know, a handful of people showing up, but the teacher was, was being beamed in. The teacher didn't want to go to the classroom. It, uh, you know, the professor w was, uh, was, you know, in that, in that target range of age and didn't want to be in, you know, mixing and mingling with the students, but they were, so they were beaming them in. I, I just think it's become uh, de facto now. So people are just used to it. Right. And uh, I think sure. we're going to have a combination of some of the, some of the sessions they'll be potentially in, in person, as you said, and there'll be some people beaming in. Uh, and if you're, you are remote and want to watch what's going on, you know, we'll have all of the AV to make that, you know, work seamlessly. That's all. I mean, that's a, I mean, that's one of the things that's going forward. You know, I think like it's an improvement on the industry because it invites more participation, you know, you know, really from, from like global partners or a speaker you could normally get because they're in Asia or they're in China or they're in, you know, wherever they are. Uh, so I, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. What do you think you mentioned a little bit about the, the spacing in the, in the uh, offices and that kind of stuff. Do you think we're going to see a, sort of a permanent hybrid workforce as well? Is that, uh, what's your perspective on that kind of idea? Yeah, I've been, I've been trying to research and I've talked to people in the commercial real estate and there's this two, two schools of thought, right? Some are saying, you know, uh, companies are actually gonna need more office space because they're gonna bring employees back and they need to keep them more spread out and social distance. Mm. And, and then there's the other that say companies are gonna downsize, but they're gonna need temporary space and, you know, the, the we work type of, uh, of scenario where, you know, when you need to have a meeting with 15, 20 people, you're going to rent a room that's big enough and has enough space to house those people, but you only need it for a day or two. Right. So uh, we'll see. I, I, I'm not sure how that, you know, how that all is going to work out. We, we have to be, again, a little optimistic that people are going to come back to an office or uh, or our industry is going to you know, change significantly. Um, but not, not sure exactly right now what that's going to look like in the future. Yeah, I, I, I was involved in a discussion and I guess there's just so much empty, empty office real estate in New York. And they were like saying they're going to convert it into like uh, condominiums so that there's places for people to live where they didn't used to be able to live before. And I was like, wow, that's a major sort of a, of a, of a, of a shift of locating people. And I don't know if the services are there to support that, but uh, interesting idea nonetheless. Yeah, you see big companies, I think Google and Amazon and, and others have bought space, you know, bought buildings in Manhattan because the prices are, are great right now. And they're, I guess, anticipating having their workforce come back, you know, in some capacity. I do think, again, it, it's, it's, it's not going to be everybody showing up uh, eight to five, you know, Monday through Friday. I, I think there's going to be a lot of flexibility in time, but they'll have a, a place to go and at least, you know, a couple days a week. And uh, and maybe just hoteling space in that in that office, right? Yeah, those those big big tech firms have done actually really well during this pandemic. You know, do you do you have a bellwether on our industry yet? How how ultimately the security industry did in 2020? Have you heard? I haven't heard any sort of economic data yet about 2020. Maybe it's too early to close out Q4. I don't know. You know, based on my discussions with uh, you know the, mostly on the manufacturing side. Uh, you know, people were down. Now it's it's all depending on what they're comparing. Uh, you know, year over year, they were down maybe five to eight percent. Some people as much as fifteen to twenty percent. I think it really depended on you know where you were selling into the market. I, I think from what I've experienced, you know, the SMB space it was hit very hard in in the pandemic. Those people, you know, those small office environments, you know, just were completely shut down. And they're, they're not going to put in access control, video or other systems uh, if there's nobody going to the office. So I think the SMB space took a bigger hit. If that's the vertical you were in, you probably were hurt more than the enterprise space where we actually uh, saw an uptick in business year over year. So 
uh, big companies, as you're saying, they, you know, they're, they're investing um, and, and spending money on their infrastructure. Uh, so, you know, if you were in the enterprise space, you probably weren't hit as bad as, as uh, some of the other markets. Yeah, we and we we saw that, and we also saw DoD did really well. They actually started accelerating projects for us to keep their workforce busy, which was was interesting. You know, I'd, uh, we lost our international stuff because they wouldn't let our guys travel to do maintenance in, in bases in Korea and Australia and places like that. But um, by and by and large, the 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 critical infrastructure industry seemed to do pretty well. Um, healthcare and the places that were that had to operate, and they needed. Oh well, this is a good one. Did did you see the? Um, did you see a blending of visitor management and access control kind of wrapped around, you know, answering the questions, the six COVID questions and all that sort of stuff? Did you witness any of that in any of the places that you went? We were asked to install quite a bit of that stuff, actually, in the last, you know, six months. You know, uh, we had a problem in my previous life and, and there was uh, there was an uptick in interest. And, you know, as people started talking about return to work, return to work and and how are we going to manage uh, that process? Um, and so there was some, a lot of activity there. I think at the end of the day, before they even got a chance to start implementing these things, you know, uh, p- things got pushed out. So uh, I, c- I certainly think there's still some uh, valid- validity there in, in that those are going to be needed to track who's, you know, who's in, who's out, when did they come, who did they, you know, who was in the office. Because, uh, you know, even if the vaccine meets, a, meets critical mass here, it, we're not talking about 100%. Um, you know, extinction of this of this virus. So mm-hmm. I think there is going to be uh, tracking that's going to be required uh, in offices as part of the return to work. Uh, and certainly, I think visitor management is a big component of that. There's some other, you know, really cool technologies that are available uh, that may fill that, you know, fill that gap. Um, but, you know, again, it, it takes money for companies to spend. I think everybody's a little nervous about um, you know, putting putting a lot of uh, cap, capex into offices when they're not quite sure yet uh, when that day is coming. Yeah, for sure. It's, I, I think everybody's having difficulty predicting their sort of their revenues longer term. It's, it's definitely been tumultuous. Um, you mentioned cyber earlier, and I know we've got we've got several committees at PSA. Um, you know that I, that I've w- worked on. Um, is that um, that component? Um, you know, it's part of like on the federal side that you have to keep your access control logs for your facilities and all that kind of stuff. So there's a there's a definitely need there. Do you think that um, that 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 logging of that visitor management, you know, kind of like the, with, if it's an idea of contact tracing or whatever it may be, um, do you think that that's going to help, help proliferate a little bit more as we get back? Um, you know, outside of the enterprise, where kind of everybody's going to need some sort of something in their lobby to to digitally log who's coming and going or whatever. I, I do. I, I think there's, you know, whether it's a, a manual process um, or, you know, there's some really cool technology. We implemented, you know, facial recognition, which is also, te- you know, tracking um, for your wearing a mask yeah. and uh, temperature. And so, you know, if, if you were approved to be in the office and you were wearing your mask and you were within the right temperature range, it would unlock the door. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, new and that's not that facial recognition is new. Uh, certainly, if you know, fingerprint uh, biometrics, I think is going to have a struggle for for the future. I think anybody <laughs> sure. in that space is figuring out how to pivot to uh, either iris or facial recognition. And the technology is, is really gotten uh, uh, robust over the last year, especially. And it was amazing how fast these companies were introducing algorithms to look for a mask. And still can identify you even wearing a mask and um, and and check your temperature and then it's sending out you know either a direct uh, command to unlock the door or it's integrated into an access control system so uh, I think there's you know certainly a big market for technologies like that uh, that we're just going to help not only uh, you know in the tracking but also just making people you know it's kind of like the TSA model you know it makes people more comfortable knowing that everybody's getting checked going into that airport, right? And that's, uh, and I think that's going to be part of it, uh, making people feel comfortable returning to an office. Yeah, there's a, we talk about it as, as a, a, we always talk of duty of care is kind of like for your traveling employees, but there's this duty of care at home now that's kind of come, come home to everybody, all the business owners, and how do we take care of our staff? And I think even their their health and mental wellness, there's a lot of um, considerations that were not as, prominent, you know, as they were, as they were in the, in the past, maybe, or as prominent as they should have always been, maybe I should say. Um, 
we've got a couple minutes left, Matt. What the, what kind of, let's see, what do you want to give to the audience to maybe take forward, give them some inspiration? Uh, what, what do you, uh, what, what do you say about 2021? Well, again, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it very, uh, very optimistically as we emerge from the pandemic. I mean, we weathered, you know, a huge storm here. And uh, while, you know, the, the government certainly been funding a lot of activity uh, through stimulus and, and other means, uh, you know, companies have, uh, you know, in, in, by and large have weathered. There been a lot of companies that have been devastated, obviously, in a terrible time to be in retail or, um, you know, in the restaurant and hospitality. But I do think uh, there's pent up demand now. And, you know, it's interesting talking to people, you know, they're, they're not all that anxious. Or I said, they're interested in meeting with people, but they're, they're maybe a little gun shy, so to speak. But then they say, well, I'm, I'm going to Hawaii on vacation. <laughs> you know, I'm going, to, yeah. I'm going to Florida to spend a week on the beach. So they're, they're willing to get on airplanes and go places and do things. And I think there's a lot of pent up, again, pent up demand. Uh, so I, I do think, um, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're pack animals at the core. And I do think we want to, we want to be around others. And I, I think a lot of people have been locked down uh, and locked down significantly through this and they're itching to get out. So as, as soon as things really start to open up, we get over this wave of activity, the vaccine gets out. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic for this industry. And I do think uh, technologies are going to help solve some of these problems that you know we're offering. It may sh be shift for a lot of the integrators, but I, I do think uh, between the package that PSA has to offer on the AV side as well as on the security side, uh, you know we, we're looking at it as um, you know there's going to be good times ahead for this part of the industry. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100. percent There's a new sheriff in town at PSA, folks. Matt Barnett's going to get us through this thing. We're, we are getting there. I, I, I believe you. I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I'm very optimistic about what we're going to do going forward and looking forward to help out, helping the PSA community, uh, whatever, whatever we need to do. I know we're all going to embrace like realistically soon enough and uh, we'll get it done. Great. Send my best to uh, Christina there. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in one, one shape or another, whether in person at PSA Tech or, or somewhere else. Yeah, I appreciate you joining me today, Matt. You'll, we'll see you soon, sir. Take care. Aloha. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.